Now, here's the thing. I love you. I only want what's best for you. And I know I can say some things that are difficult and I can say some things that are hard, but I only want what's best for you. And so for that reason, I'm not going to allow you to turn your hearing over to me. I don't want you showing up at my meetings like, give me a fresh word from God. If you want a fresh word from God, go spend some time with Jesus. It doesn't mean that I won't, might not prophesy. It doesn't mean I might not. I believe in the prophet's ministry. But you can't turn your hearing from God over to me. You can't turn your hearing from God over to your wife. You can't turn your hearing from God over to your husband. You can't turn your hearing from God over to your pastor. You need to hear from God for yourself. To succeed in life, we have to fight. That's why winners train spirit, soul, and body. We have to be ready. When the fight starts, all the theories are over. We either have it or we don't. We will get hit, but we get back up. We fight to win. All right, we've been talking about mag changes. We've been talking about the fact that you can have them forward or, or to the rear, but we recommend bullets facing forward. We also said that you should be able to have at least one mag, be able to feed the gun at least one time. But once this gun goes to empty and my slide is locked back, I'm going to take this out. My finger is going to be pointed along the spine and I'm going to insert it. And then once my finger bends, I'm going to slam it home and then I'm going to drop the slide. Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. Welcome back to Fight to Win. I'm still very excited about this subject we've been covering now, and this will be our third week on how to hear from Jesus accurately. And we've covered a lot of things. And so as we're getting into this, I want you to make sure you're going back and listening to some of these things, especially, you know, last week we were supposed to, uh, on Fridays, we're normally trying to make Fridays like our offering day, but uh, didn't get a chance to get there. Maybe we'll, I don't know, double up this week or something. I don't know. But it was so important what we were talking about last Friday. And so if you've missed it, or the last broadcast, if you've missed it, you need to go to fighttowin.tv and listen to it, man, because there was so many important things that I said. We we're talking about that the more carnal you are, the more carnal you want your leading from the Lord. And, and just as a tip, you do not want to be carnal, okay? And uh, if you go to here to Romans chapter 8, and we're going to be in verse... 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Now notice this does not say, for as many as are led by circumstances. For as many as are led by signs. For as many as are led by open doors or shut doors. And man, we, I think we hammered that one pretty heavy. We talked about how uh, Paul encountered a very shut door. And yet, with the door completely and absolutely shut to the point they killed him, he went back in there and kicked it open with the word of God. Man, God is not looking for wimps. He's looking for people ready to fight. And I'll tell you another thing about uh, open doors, okay? I'll tell you a funny story. So one day, I think we were training law enforcement, right? And we were doing a, a low light training. And in this low light training, uh, we had a, it's, it, it's at a, a college and they actually have an indoor shoot house, right? And you can move the walls around, you can t turn it, make it bright, you can make it uh, real dark. And we were doing low light training, which meant that they were using, utilizing their flashlights and things like that. Well, in one of these drills, the, uh, it was, a, it might have even been a SWAT team, but I, I don't really remember right now. But as they, were, as they were coming down and they're starting to clear this house that we've set up inside this building, and it's dark, they're having to use their flashlights and stuff. And this guy, they, there's a room and they, they send him in there to clear the room and they're watching it and he's supposed to kind of button hook around, which anyway, it's a technical term, uh, Google it. So they start to button hook and just as he does, I literally grab the guy that goes into the room, snatch him up and I grab his mouth and I... I Grab me and I said, you're out, you're out. And so they don't know it because they didn't do a wall, or they didn't do a room flood, which means that they would all come in and take a, a dominant sector on the room. They just, um, they'd send him in there by himself. So what I did was 
as I opened the door, he had cracked the door, you know, he'd come in, but he, the door was still slightly open, or slightly closed, so I pushed it all the way open. And the guy says, it, the, his team's still out in the hallway, they're holding positions, and he says, they said, uh, how's it looking there? And me, not, not their buddy, me, I said, oh, it's all clear, come on in. <laughs> ah! They did, and we lit them up with some munitions. What did I learn from that? Just because a door is open doesn't mean you should walk through. You know, that's true in every lay life. A lot of times, there's a lot of times things are open to us that we should not walk through. You know, we're doing TV today. And um, do you know that I was actually offered television my first year in ministry? That I had a guy, I was preaching somewhere in Missouri, and the guy actually owned a, a television station and told me he'd give me a 30-minute broadcast every day, Monday through Friday, Monday through Saturday, and then on Sunday, I could have a one-hour broadcast, and I could teach. And uh, the Lord told me, you don't do that. And I was like, no, no, this is a great opportunity. And all this, you don't do that. If you do that, it'll destroy you. And, you know, I didn't like it. Now, you know how we talked about being willing and obedient? I wasn't. I was obedient, I mean, because he is God. But uh, I was not really. But you want to know what? This is 28 years, 29 years later. It would have destroyed me. I was far too arrogant to have been on television. I was far too full of myself. And um, I'm grateful that I didn't. So I'm telling you, don't just walk through a door just because it's open. And there can be doors that God has called you to that are shut. And you're going to have to kick them open with the Word of God, the power of God, and the gift of God that he's placed on the inside of you, exactly like Paul did. Think about Jesus. Jesus in his own hometown, right? He goes to his own hometown. These people know him the best. And after he preaches a great, really inspiring message, you know, what's, you know what happens? They try to kill him. Another pretty shut door, <laughs> right? I mean, think about it. If the people who know you best, if the people who have heard about you and they think you should be killed instead of being in the ministry, wouldn't that give you pause to go somewhere, check into a hotel, and say, hey, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. And then with all the other preachers, you know, you talk about shut doors, all the other preachers would literally plot to kill Jesus. Now you pastors out there, you think you had it bad with just your people. You think you've had it bad with your friends in the ministry. How would you like it if preachers showed up to your meetings to find a way to trick you and then eventually get you killed. That's bad. That, those are shut doors. Those are like, hey, I shouldn't be in ministry. Everybody seems to be against me. But yet, that was exactly what Jesus and Paul were called to do. Are you with me? So please do not be led by open doors or shut doors. You can't do that. Okay? You just can't. You need to be led by the Spirit of God. That's what you need to be led by. You need to, don't tell me about, when I start asking you what has God called you to do or what's going on in your life, don't, don't refer to your circumstances. Or if I say what is God telling you, don't tell me what you can see, feel, and touch. Tell me what he's leading you in your heart, the real you. Man, if you missed all that, you need to go back. I, but I, that, I've said some really important things right there. Now, I want to get into uh, a couple things. I'm hoping we get through them both today, but. First off, let's talk about the fact that it is your responsibility to hear from Jesus for yourself. Go with me to uh, 1 Kings 13. Now, this is, uh, I have to be honest, I don't really like this story. Um, I, there's thing, parts about this story that bug me, but it doesn't change the fact that it's the Word of God. Okay, We're in 1 Kings 13. And he says this, he says, um, And behold, a man of God went from Jud Judah to Bethel by the word of the Lord. So he's doing what God told him to do. And, Je and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. That's the king. And he cried out against the altar, the man of God did, by the word of the Lord. Again, he's being instructed. And he said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord, Behold, a child, Josiah by name, shall be born to the house of David. And on you he shall sacrifice the priests of the high places. 
who burn incense on you, and men's bones shall be burned on you. And he gave a sign that, uh, and he gave a sign the same day, saying, "This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Surely the altar shall split apart, and the ashes on it shall be poured out." Now it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God who cried out against the altar in Bethel, that he stretched out his hand from the altar, saying, "Arrest him." Then his hand, which he stretched out towards him, withered so that it could not be pulled back to himself. That's quite a sight, isn't it? Now I want you to think about this. You've heard from God. God speaks to you. He tells you to go down there and, and get in the king's face, <laughs> right? And tell him, these old stinking fake gods you've been serving, their priests are going to be you know, destroyed here on this altar. And guess what, king? Uh, th this is going to be a sign to you, this brokenness. And so the king wants to attack you, but then the power of God's on you and God's back in your play. And so what happens is his arm just withers up. And he can't even pull it back to himself. I mean, th this shows you the man knows God. This is not an immature, uh, an immature man in the things of God. Now notice this. The altar also was split apart and the ashes poured out on the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of God. Now, now notice here, this is how mature this man is in his walk for the Lord. He has enough confidence when God tells him to go get in the king's face, he does. When he's in the king's face, he says exactly what he's told to say. When the king starts to attack him, God jumps on that king and then what happens? Then the sign that he proclaimed happens right there. Kaboom! Splits the altar in half. Let me ask you a question. Does this guy know God for himself? Evidently. Does he trust God? He went and got in the king's face over one word from God. Yeah, I think he does. Now notice this. Then the king said to the man of God, oh, excuse me. Then the king answered and said to the man of God, Please entreat the favor of the Lord your God. He might not be his God, but he understands he is the Lord your God. I can see God's back in your play. Please entreat the favor of the Lord your God and pray for me that my hand may be restored. So the man of God entreated the Lord and the king's hand was restored and he became as before. This man knows God. It says this, then the king said to the man of God, Come home with me and refresh yourself, and I will give you a reward. Now notice what he says. But the man of God said to the king, If you were to give me half your house, now that that's, would be quite a bit of money if you're talking about a king. If you were to give me half your house, I would not go with you, nor would I eat bread, nor drink water in this place. For so it was commanded me by the word of the Lord, saying, You shall not eat bread, nor drink water, nor return by the same way you came. So he went another way and did not return by the, the, the way that he came to Bethel. Okay, so what, what happens here? Let's, again, let's back this up and look at it. The Lord speaks to this man to go confront this king, and he does it. And while he's doing it, there are miracles, signs, and wonders. And now the king is willing to bless him with whatever he wants. And the man says, even if you were to give me half of your house, I ain't doing it. What's he saying? I can't be bought. No, nope, I'm serving God. I can't be bought. So he goes on in here. He says this. He says, now an old prophet, verse 11. Now an old prophet dwelt in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done in Bethel. Then they also told their father the words which he had spoken to the king. And their father said to them, Which way did he go? For, he had not, for, his, son had, uh, for his sons had seen which way the man of God went, who came from Judah. Then he said to his sons, Saddle the donkey. So they saddled the donkey for him, and he rode on it, and went after the man of God and found him sitting underneath an oak. Then he said to him, Are you the man of God which came from Judah? And he said, I am. And he said to him, come home with me and eat bread. And, he, and the man said, now this is the man that heard from God, that went to confront the king, that went to deal with this man, that God showed up, 
that couldn't be bought, this man says, I cannot return with you nor go with you, neither can I eat or drink water uh, with you in this place. For I have been told by the word of the Lord, you shall not eat bread nor drink water, nor shall you go, uh, nor return by going the way you came. And he said to him, the older prophet, he said, he said to him, I too am a prophet, as you are. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with you to your house, that he may eat bread and drink water. And it says, he was lying to him. Verse 19, So he went back with him and ate bread in his house and drank water. What just happened? Here's a man that knows God for himself, knows how to operate in the power of God, trusts God to the point that he's willing to confront a king, that he cannot be bought, he, cannot, he will not leave the will of God for money, he won't leave the will of God for pressure from the king, but he's about to return, depart from the will of God because he's, he's turned his hearing from God, from God over to somebody else. He's now allowed this old prophet to tell him what God is saying. Now what this old prophet says is completely contrary to what God had personally told this man. And you want to know what? He's about to lose it all because he turned his hearing from God over to someone else. Now here's the thing. I love you. I only want what's best for you and I know I can say some things that are difficult and I can say some things that are hard but I only want what's best for you. And so for that reason I'm not going to allow you to turn your hearing over to me. I don't want you showing up at my meetings like give me a fresh word from God. You want a fresh word from God go spend some time with Jesus. It doesn't mean that I won't, might not prophesy. It doesn't mean I might not. I believe in the prophet's ministry but you can't turn your hearing from God over to me. You can't turn your hearing from God over to your wife. You can't turn your hearing from God over to your husband. You can't turn your hearing from God over to your pastor. You need to hear from God for yourself. And listen, if a pastor's worth his salt, listen, I remember one time, and I, I think we're going to end up going in four weeks. So um, I remember that uh, when my pastor, I, now my pastor has never won. I, they say, you have a pastor? Yes, I have a pastor. If you're a man of God, you, I don't care what level of ministry you're at, you should have a pastor because it's only the pastor's anointing that keeps you, it keeps you stable. It keeps you grounded. That's, it keeps you from being wearied and scattered. You've got to have a pastor. I don't care how large your ministry is, you've got to have a pastor. I have a pastor and I pastor pastors. I pa Well, not just pastors, but ministers. But my pastor doesn't try to control me, doesn't try to tell me what God is saying. And most of the time what he says is, is he said, uh, listen, son, you can hear from God for yourself, but this is what I'm getting. You pray about it. That's the way it should be done. And then ultimately you have to give an account for yourself. I'm not going to face Jesus. Listen, I love Jeff. I believe Jeff hears from God. But I am not going to walk into the throne room, look at Jesus in the eye and say, well, Jeff told me to do this. Because Jesus died so that I could have a personal relationship with him. It's one thing if Jeff speaks to me and then says, you know, you go pray about it. You can hear from God. If God doesn't bear witness to it, throw it away. And that's the way my pastor does me. There was one time, though, first time ever. In fact, I was trying to remember if he'd ever done it again. I was about to fly to uh, Afghanistan or Iraq to minister to the troops. And we were setting it up and things. And he said, what are you doing? I was getting ready to, to set it all up. And um, I said, well, I'm, I'm getting ready to, we're, we're setting up this trip. I've got to pull the trigger on it today to get it in operation. And he says, don't go. I said, sir. He goes, do not get on that plane. Do not go. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. And he'd never done it before. Now, I'm not turning my hearing from God over to him. As soon as, he, as soon as he said it, it registered on the inside of me. Come to find out, it was during that time that they had one of those, those shellings or one of those tacks where people were trying to get in the green zone or something. Something happened. 
And it was a good thing I wasn't over there. But still, I still had to hear from God for myself. I'll, I'll give you another illustration. There was a man of God that I, I firmly regarded as a prophet, that I believed he was a legitimate prophet. Now, so he shows up to my church one day. And when he shows up to my church, um, there was a man in our ministry, uh, probably one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made in ministry was letting this guy come on board. But, and there's a lot of reasons for it. Maybe I'll tell you about it at another time. But I did it. And it was causing problems. And I needed to get rid of him. And I knew I needed to get rid of him. But there were some underlying things. He had several kids. And I, uh, I didn't want, there were some things he did that were shameful. And I didn't want him shamed. And um, so I was trying to navigate my way through it. Okay. And... Um, so this prophet shows up, and it's the night service, and the prophet walks in, and he and his wife are there, and this guy walks in, and he interacts with me, he walks back out, and the prophet turns to me and he said, you need to get that out, you need to fire that man and get that man out of your ministry immediately. Or no, not immediately. You need to fire that man and get that man out of your ministry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I do. Yes, sir, I do. So, next day. He comes in with his wife, and um, this man's still there. And so they tell me this story. They tell me one night about how Oral Roberts and Lester Summerall were having dinner. And their number two men in their ministry came with them. And they're sitting at dinner. And Lester Summerall looks over at Oral Roberts and says, You need to get that man out of your ministry. Oral Roberts is number two. You need to get that man out of your ministry. And he, they said, Oral Roberts turned to that man and said, you're fired. You're done. Uh, I had somebody meet you at the office to clean out your desk, but you're, this is your last day. And they looked at me and they tell me this story as though when this prophet spoke to me the night before, I should have immediately fired him and got rid of him. Now this is a man I regarded as a prophet. But I looked at him and I told him, I said, Sir, you are a prophet of God, but you are not my Holy Spirit. There are things I'm going to have to negotiate in this. I believe you've heard from God, but there's a way to do it. And I'm finding out within the Lord how I'm supposed to do it. Not just to do it, but how. And I am not going to do something just because you told me. I know the head of the church. And you confirmed what I already had in my heart. But I'm going to do it the way the head of the church tells me to do it. Not the way you tell me to do it. Now, did it cause a problem in the relationship? Yeah. Yeah, because he wanted me. He wanted me to turn my hearing from God over to him. I'm not turning my hearing from God over to anybody. Why? Because I don't want to end up in this position right here. I don't, want to, I don't want to operate in the power of God. I don't want to hear from God. I don't want to hear from God. I don't want to stand kings down. And then when somebody walks up, and sells me on the supernatural. This is another thing about hearing from God. Guys, it's not always clouds appearing and lightning. And it's not what I call Charlton Heston moments. Where God speaks to you and says, Thus saith the Lord. It's not like that. It's not, not always. Very rarely actually. And there are people that want, they want the spectacular. But they don't necessarily want intimacy. You know, I might get around other people and they might think I'm spectacular, but I'm not spectacular to Jeff. And I'm definitely not spectacular to my wife because we have a more intimate relationship. What do, you, do you think God wants to have to, do you, do you want to be mulish till you've got to see a cloud of glory and you've got to, to hear thunder in the sky that you have to see something and feel something? Is that? Is that the type, I, I don't want that for my intimate relationships as though everything has to be a dog and pony show. But yet this guy would not turn aside for money, but he will turn aside because, I, because a man tells him, I saw something, I heard something spectacularly, supernaturally. Do you know how many people are getting fouled up over this? And people say, well, the prophet told me and it messed me up. It's not the prophet's fault. It's your fault. 
The prophet can point you in a way. Now, I do blame the prophet. I'm not saying I don't. But I'm telling you, if you acted on it and you didn't talk with Jesus about it, that, that's on you. Why? Because for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God, and you should know the Spirit of God. And if the prophet is accurate, you should know it. And if the prophet's not accurate, you should know it. But you should have an intimate knowledge of this with yourself. So what happened? Ooh, boy. Uh, so what happens with this guy? He said, um, uh, he t he's lying to him. Then he went back with him, and he ate bread in his house and drank water. You know what? I'm going to just stop. Because you need, to, you, you need to see what happens here. That we're about to get to the aggravating part of the story for me. Um, but the main thing I want you to get, and I'll pick it up and I'll finish it up tomorrow. But you need to get out of this. You can hear from God. Now, do I believe God speaks through me? Yes. Do I believe that God can speak to you through me? Yes. But I also believe that you should have an intimate knowledge of Jesus for yourself. And that's the whole reason we're teaching this. You know, I'm Kurt Owen. This is Fight to Win. And in order to fight to win, I'm telling you, you have to have an intimate relationship. And I'm going to pray about that with you when you come right back. Thank you so much. But you can hear from God for yourself. To receive your free gift from Kurt Owen Ministries, visit our website or call us at 1-800-215-0428. Are you ready to hear from Jesus for yourself? You know, this is eternal life. That you might know Him. And never, it's fine to have prophets speak into your life, but never, ever let it substitute for you having intimate knowledge of Jesus for yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus, you paid a precious price that you could speak to us directly. I pray that my brother and my sister right now, one, they forgive people who've spoken into their lives in the past that it didn't turn out that way, that they set that aside, but Lord, they press in now to hear from you directly, personally. And Lord, I thank you, you remove every obstacle and they can hear from you more clearly than they ever have before. And Lord, when they know it's you, they'll act on it. Thank you for this, in Jesus' name, amen. I love you very, very much. You can hear from God. I'm Kurt Owen. This is Fight to Win. Remember, Jesus is risen. Victory is assured. Not your typical minister, Kurt Owen left a successful career in private investigation and executive protection for the ministry over 20 years ago. His simple, practical application of God's Word will reveal how much God loves you and give you the ability to walk in victory with Jesus. They, they want the supernatural, but they don't really want just the supernatural. They want, the, they want it to be spectacular. Well, the Lord spoke to me in my heart. Well, I had an angelic visitation. Well, then yours must be more real. Because after all, you had an angel show up. That's bull.